Welcome back, guys, to the podcast. So today we have with us Mohammed Amir. So Mohammed, please do like a proper introduction of yourself, what you do and stuff. Okay, so my name is Mohammed, as you said, and, and I am actually currently working as a consultant and in the startups. I'm also helping them to get the funding, preparing their marketing strategies and launching strategies. But I have 20 years of experience. I have uh, my own uh, three startups also where I'm working. It's a technology-based startup. It's IoT, robotics, and AI-based startup. So this is a short summary. Great, great. So if, yes. because there's a lot of people starting, starting new, there's a lot of people thinking of starting their own startup. What advice would you give them? And I think okay. what I have in mind is that people put too much emphasis on the funding like yes. bro if you're not good then you're not good no amount yes, of money exactly. will ever fix that if you don't know how to control yes. your money yes uh, see for the starting a new business especially you know because you you raised one point regarding the funding you know when you launch the uh, startup it is very important that what is the cause why you are launching it you know so if you are launching for the fundraising only then this is a totally a wrong intention because why if you've been rejected by one or two investors initially so what will happen later on you will be disappointed and you will close everything and you will lose everything so this goal is a very short goal you know when you want to do something in the life you should have to have the goal which is a long-term goal so because short-term goal if you achieve it after that you don't have in the life anything else. so so always make a long-term goal you know so this is my my first is why don't launch for the money don't launch for the funding so whenever you want to launch something, you should have to have some emotional affiliation with it. So you can work for the cause, you know. So you will put all your efforts. You will not look for the money only. You will not look for uh, the struggles with whatever you are doing. So always launch the startup, which is some definitely for the cause of the community or community or whatever. Okay, so what is the step to start first? First of all, any startup starts with the idea. So as a short summary, because, you know, every step, whatever I'm going to tell you, it's a, it's a separate podcast actually, but here I will just summarize it. I will not go to the deep detail of it. So idea selection is one of the most important thing whenever you are launching. So uh, the idea should be, uh, you know, two kinds of the ideas usually there. First of all, you are, uh, the 80% of the ideas are based on the problem, but you are going to solve it. What is the problem in the market? Okay. There's, they are not finding the taxi. So they, they launch the Uber, for example. So you are going to the hospital, always there's a rush, you know, so crowded. So you, you launch the application where you can book the appointment to the application. So there's, you are solving something similarly for the industry or whatever. So this is another type of the idea, which is usually we call it luxury. So somewhere you are ordering like a food ordering, food ordering is not a problem. It's a, some sort of the luxury, you know? So this, when you are providing the luxury or, or, or some, you know, easiness to the market. So it's mean. You have the limited market, you have the small market, but definitely you are, they are going to pay you. So the idea selection is the first thing. And how to select the idea, for example, you can look around what's the problem you are having in your area, your town or in the country, you can do the study. And before this, you should see what is your specialty. Maybe some idea, some problem is there in the market, but you don't have any information about it. You don't have any knowledge. You don't have any experience. You don't have any education background about it. Don't launch it. So it will going to, you know, uh, waste your time and money. After the idea selection, the most important thing is the team selection. Who are the ones who are going to work on that idea? It's not only you don't start alone. You should have to have uh, at least minimum two partners together. Even you are going for the funding, they are not going to fund for the single partner. This is the rule. If, wherever you go to venture capital, they will say how many partners you are. If you say I'm alone, so they will say, okay, sorry, or, or they will not accept you at all. So at least two and maximum is five. But the ideal is three, less than three and more than three is, is not good idea. Who are the three partners you should have Why? to have? Yes, because, you know, if you have less people, less partners, so you will have a lot of workload on both of you. But if you have more than three, you know, when you are growing the partners, so there's a lot of, you know, uh, different opinions are there. So difficult to, you know, all, all the five or six people to handle, you know, so somebody want to go in this way, somebody want to go in that way. So more partners is causing more problem, you know, usually. Exactly. So, this is what I was going to say. Like maybe some investor don't, doesn't want too many partners because too many exactly. people want to do like some specific thing. Absolutely. 
So what are the three uh, partners you should have to have minimum? One should be the one who is expert in the core idea. For example, you are launching the company who is providing the RFID solution. So you should have to have one who is a technical guy who is expert in that one. Or you are going to launch e-commerce store, for example. So the one who has the knowledge of e-commerce business core businesses. The other one should be good in the marketing and sales. So he can launch your product. He can prepare the marketing mm. and launching strategies mm -hmm. or sales strategy. The third one, uh, minimum, he should be good in the management, in the businesses, laws, regulations, and in internal affairs of the company. So by this way, you can distribute the work. You all guys can focus on certain areas. Otherwise, mm -hmm. your focus will be diverted and you cannot be a successful person. So after having the co-founder, then the most important thing, how to make the MVP or prototype. So first of all, you have to, before you do the prototype, you have this idea, you have the team now, now sit together and do the pre-feasibility study. So what is a pre-feasibility study? Whatever you are going to launch in the market, you have to see whether it's a market fit or not. In which market you are going to launch. Maybe you are launching something which requires an internet, but in the town, the internet is very weak. So they don't like to use the internet more. So uh, you are failed. So somewhere, you, maybe it's, 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 uh, they are using smartphones and, and such kind of the thing, which we called it market fit. So product should be a market fit. So do the feasibility study. What is the in, uh, ingredient of the feasibility study, I can say. First of all, how much will be the cost of the production? How much money is required to launch it? Minimum money which you can spend. And how much is, is the marketing uh, budget and all the budgets you can prepare? And after that, okay, what will be the marketing strategies? Who are the competitors? How you are going to, uh, to, 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 to bring a good team together also, other than the, your co-founders? So when you have all the financials, marketing and business strategies, competitor analysis, evaluate how much money is required at least to go to the market till the MVP or minimum viable product. So when you have that much money with you, so then you can start building and, and make a proper project management. And my advice, always launch or focus on one product. Don't bring the two or three products or too many features. Two will lose. I lost already before when I started in, I did this mistake and I learned by, the, you know, by, by losing the money. So I'm giving the advice and also I'm giving the consultancy to some businesses. So I saw they lost the focus because they was, you know, running around here and there. When you are launching it, go with the minimum viable product MVP, at least this can, for example, you have, let us say you want to uh, have a booking.com like, uh, or Air, Airbnb type model you have. So at least this can accommodate the hotels. They can come and, and just put you know, their, their uh, costs or, or, or their accommodations and users, they can log in and come and, and, and they can put, you know, they can book the hotels for example. So this is the minimum viable product. But in the future, you can put, okay, I want to add the, uh, for example, I want to uh, add the feature which can make a rent on yearly basis, for example. I want, for example, uh, sales and purchase also. So these features are not a core features. So don't put too many features. Go to the market, then you can, you can, you can add later on, you know. So because you will burn the cash during the development, it will be too much late. Your competitor will come with the market and then you will lose. So just rush to the market by anyhow. So at least you can engage the, the, the Yes, customers. I think here something to add is that before, like they should focus on one thing that no one else basically has, quote unquote, or at least they can do better because it's very yes. little cases that no one has it. And most cases that, it's something that you can try and do better. And once you master yes, that, once you, once you master that product or service, then you can expand to like a different product or service. And I think Absolutely. a lot of businesses do the mistake of like controlling everything. But if you control everything, then you cannot really expand to like a never, such a big never, level. Never, so yeah, never. of course, if they focus on the long run, then they will have to sh lose kind of in the short run and say, hey, I, I must, I must trust. I must bring some employees on and some teammates who I can trust. So they can manage like different like departments. So you can focus on the other thing because you're not the manager yes. of, your, of your business. There's your, yes, you're exactly. the manager of your business in the short run, but over the long run, you must be the CEO and the executive. So you must True. make decisions and not control the whole situation. And Absolutely I think that right. back to your point about the executives, sure, in the beginning, if you don't have the money, then, and you cannot hire the marketing person, you cannot hire the, the, the lawyer, or you cannot hire someone who can do the research, then yes, you must bring on someone who can do this stuff 
and can take a pro portion of your business. But this comes at a cost because they will need to take the profits because they're yes. putting in their money and they will need to control a little bit of the business because it's their money. So yes. Yes, I think people should think about this stuff. Exactly. And another, another point is that why you should bring the team members in, uh, or co-founders instead of the hiring them. But your employee is working only eight hours. Even you are paying him 100,000 US dollars. 100,000 dollars. But he adds in his employee. He will work for the eight hours. He's not going to work like a co-founder. So in the beginning, you need a lot of energy, a lot of efforts. So uh, the, 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 it's better to have the co-founder because they own the business actually. So they will do the effort without the time, without the time, without any you know, day and night without any other commitment, so they, everyone will focus on it. This is one thing. Another thing is that usually is saying that how I can decide what kind of the co-founder I, I, I'm looking for, you know. So see that what is the deficiency you have in yourself. So bring the guy who can come and fulfill that one. For example, I'm weak in the marketing. I'm, I ha I'm very good in the technical. I'm very good in the administration. But I feel that I'm very bad in the marketing. So I need the person who can who can cover my this this you know deficiency? Who can overcome this problem? So bring the person. What are the thing which is not you 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 are owning or you don't have that one? Usually we are saying like you know, okay. So so another thing what what we are talking to to focus on the certain product you know because for example if you your app has a two or three features I will give you one example. You have the hospital appointment in your application. You have the beauty parlor appointments. You have bank appointments. And it has a three or four appointment. You have a great idea. The idea is absolutely amazing and great. But then from where you will start marketing? You will start from the hospital. You will start from the parlors. You will start from the banks. So you have to burn the money everywhere and the result will be nothing. So you have a two, uh, two hospital, you have the five <laughs> banks and you have the three, you know, beauty parlors. So, so people are going to book nothing. So instead, if you have only... For example, 20 hospitals in your app, this is enough people will be happy. They can say, yeah, well, I can see many, many service providers. So this is one thing. After the launching, you, should, you know, when you want to launch, the launching strategy should be like this. It should be start from your own area, own region. Don't launch, you are sitting in the New York and you are launching in another country or other region, Chicago or somewhere else. So it is going to create a lot of hassle and don't launch all over the country. I will give you one example. I have one, my client, I told him don't launch all over the, 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 the country. He said, no, 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 I want to launch it. And you know, I have the budget and this and that. And no, no, I, because I don't want people to copy my idea. So I want to launch everywhere. I said, okay, go ahead. But this is wrong. You're a mistake. So what happened? He launched everywhere. And you know, after three months, he came to, he came back to me. He said, sorry, it was my mistake. I said, what did happen? No, his idea was like a Uber, Uber cream idea. Okay. Uber, Uber clone. So he did a marketing everywhere in the country. So some driver, they, they registered with one city, another driver, they registered from another city and some from another city. You now, for example, you are sitting in one city and you want to book the, uh, the uh, taxi and driver, he was sitting in another, uh, another city. So imagine the problem. He has the users from New York, for example, and he has the driver from the Chicago or, or from Arkansas, for example. So how they can come and, and deliver the services. So they, he has a, in the first month, two months, he gathered 12,000 users and drivers, but he doesn't have a single ride because service providers were from one city and user from another city. So if mm -hmm. he focus on the same city, imagine how much he can earn the money. So always launch from the same city or, or the one region or one city or one country. As I, I mean one city or one region, don't go to the country. So this is the one of the strategy. And also, whenever you want to launch, you know, you have to hire the good dedicated employee. Always go with the lean and use the technology in your, your startup, you know. Don't bring the people, okay, I need for HR, I need for finance, I need for this and I for, uh, for that. And you doesn't have any single revenue. So you can bring one, you know, expert who can, you know, like a, like a, like an all-rounder who can help you more, pay him a little more, but at least you can save the pay of the other guy also. So he can be a good, you know, uh, help for you. So don't turn your cash or money. And also, also the, the other thing is that if you are intention for the funding, then from the beginning, you have to keep your books or everything in the right, you know, way, uh, always get and pay from the bank's channel. Keep your, you know, all the bills, everything with you. Make the budget and always go on the budget. For example, you have 200,000 US dollar budget for one startup. So you should prepare, you know, all, all, all your finances 
and every week or every month sit down together and see where you are you are off the track or on the track not only on the finances also on the market and sales and don't react when you reach to the minus or when you reach to the so you have to you know before this you see that indicators are going in negative so you should immediately react rather you reach to certain level and then you can say oh i lost everything and always you should plan plan b from the beginning don't plan make a plan b at the time of the emergency because you know when you are staying in in any you know so usually they are doing the safety rehearsals so what is the safety rehearsal just they want to tell to you that okay when there is a fire god forbidden so this is the gate so every week or every month there is a rehearsal you know that okay there is the emergency or this is the gate there is emergency this is the emergency gate but what will happen imagine you are new in the building and an emergency came somebody will say oh the gate will be on the left side so you doesn't know which left which is the left you will be confused you will be in the panic so when you have the plan b always in the start of the emergency you know that where you have to where have you have to go so this is this is my advice to you actually which you have to focus on yes very great advice and i think a lot of people will benefit from it and i think back to your point of like um, your friend expanding too much who was like the uber clone company something like that yes i think if entrepreneurs start up a business that they're not and they're not confident in themselves and they're just insecure then they will lose because your friend expanded all over the business because they he thought that he, people will copy him and they would be better than him and he would lose so if you're starting up a business without self confidence and you're just insecure that you're not a good entrepreneur then don't even don't even bother starting like if you don't believe in yourself then you're going to lose either way because you're going to make decisions on short term um profits and you cannot lose like the, the, even the first step you do you will lose because you know from the start that you will lose because you're not good enough so make sure uh, muhammad your camera is off so make sure guys that before you start a business you believe in yourself and you know what you're doing exactly and never run away from the business you know situation will come the dip there will be a dip don't expect too much you know if you are expecting oh in the first month i have the market 1 million dollar market is there once i will launch everybody will be there in front of my door don't expect one year you are going to gain anything okay at least for one year if you get something in one year so so you are lucky enough you know so always there is a two hurdles when you start a business you know what are those hurdles first of all to take a decision to launch the startup this is a first hurdle so if you you are planning okay i need an idea i need an idea i need an idea so it will be sure at least one year you know and then when you have the idea you will think oh, okay okay i want to launch and you are you are you know confused or afraid so the first step the first hurdle to take a decision yes i i am going to launch now i am going to start the business this is the first hurdle so when you started the second hurdle how to get the first 100 if you reach these two goals you can be a a, a very successful business so these are the two hurdles will come so don't give up for this you know yes and i think especially if you're a local business because most people will start a local business uh, and it would be a difference if you're an online business but let's yes. say you're you're a local business like a, let's say like a barber shop then connect like create content and then market it and put advertising targeting the people around you and build brand since if you're not looking to sell the company anytime soon and you're thinking in the long game then you need to build brand yeah. like nike Absolutely. doesn't make an ad and telling you like this shoe is like like 60 euros or dollars you just like them yes. because you feel something a brand is like the character of the business what are your values and what do you support so create brands and sorry create content because content is the most is the cheapest way and the best way to create awareness for your brand it has the biggest ROI for your company not tv ads or radio ads is not as effective as social media uh, marketing yes and yes create content that would be valuable marketing. either maybe it's funny maybe it's valuable mm. to the people who you are trying to reach and do not yes. sell like as much as possible to not sell because brand will compound over time the moment you sell uh, you will kind of lose the trust of your audience and the, so the longer Brilliant. you can stay without selling to your business the one thing i want to add here you know the marketing as you said the content we can say that it's a type of the marketing marketing is the most important thing in your business you know people usually they build they have the money they spend on the development they spend on offices and infrastructure oh i want to have this one in the my office i have the chair very expensive blah 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 so this is wrong you know 
So you have to spend on marketing, okay? Why? I am usually saying, if you have the gold, you have the enough gold in your home and you have the bad marketing strategy, you will not earn even a single penny. But if you have <laughs> the sand in your home, you have the sand in your home and you have the good, you know, strategy, you can be a millionaire. One guy, he asked oh. me how from the sand I can earn the million. I said, you, you know that concrete ready mix, how it's been made. He said, yeah, they are adding the cement. They are adding the, you know, granules and they are adding the sand. I said, this is the word actually. So if you are doing the marketing there, yeah, the market of everything is there, you know? So if you doing the market marketing, you have to spend, you have to put 60 to 70% of your budget to the marketing actually. So tell everyone. So it could be the, you know, talk of the town. Everybody want, like, for example, if you want to now, I will give you the example. You want to go somewhere. So Uber, you, it first thing will come to your mind if it's in your city. So first thing you will say, yeah, uh, let us see on the Uber. You want to search something on the internet. The first thing will come to your mind. Okay, let me Google. It. You will not say that. Let me explore it or let me do, uh, search on the Yahoo or something. You know, first thing is the Google. So what? Because they may build, they build a brand. So everywhere, whatever you come to the internet, they see. So similarly about your product, when people, they want to get this product, the first thing should come in their mind, your brand actually. I know it will not be in one year or two years. It is, and also, you know, people, they are, they are just, you know, copying the ideas and they are not copying the passion. You have to copy the passion actually. What was the passion behind it? So copying the idea is, is nothing, you know, the actual thing is that how much passion you have. The other thing is that don't compare your chapter number one with someone's chapter number 25. You are comparing with the Microsoft, you are comparing with the Apple, with the Google. So see their history. They are from last 15, 20 years or, or, or so or more in, in, the, in the market and you are just born today. So don't compare your chapter number one with someone's chapter number 25. You doesn't know how much struggle they have behind it. And another thing is that I will give you, because there's a lot of things to talk because of the shortage of the time. Uh, I want to stick to the topic. I want to say one thing, you know, most of the startups, they fail in first one year. Within one year, they will lose, okay, if, if, if they're not successful. And what are the main reasons? One of the main, there's a many reasons, but main reason is that, you know, they, they lost the passion. They lost the interest in the business, not because of the money. When you don't have interest in something, so you will lose everything. It means you are going to fail. So don't always, you should have to have a self-motivation. Nobody will come and motivate you. In the mm -hmm. Even your family will be against you. They will say you are, you are wasting the money, you are wasting the time and why you are not going on the job. Blah, blah, blah. So you will be very disappointed. So you have to be a self-motivated person. Inshallah, in, in, in the next podcast, maybe we can talk about it, how to be a motivated person if you are a startup owner. So what I want to say, you know, don't, he, don't, don't run away due to the struggle. Why? Because, you know, today it's look like a struggle to you. It's very hard working and it's very tough environment for you. But once you will be a successful person tomorrow, people, they will quote your success story as a motivational stories. So today you are listening to the story about the Bill Gates, you are um, 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 Mark Cuban and other people, you are listening to their story. Oh, yeah, he was doing this and he was doing that. He lost the job. He was... Uh, uh, you know, they, they throw him out of the college or university, then he struggled, he earned the money. So it was a struggle, but he doesn't, he doesn't give up in the struggle. So today it's a motivational story for you, right? So create a motivation for the others. So today it's a struggle, definitely. But if you stay firm, you didn't give up later on, you will be one of them. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, for, uh, Mr. Muhammad, for coming on. We're running out of time. I have, I have to jump on another call. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.